Fructose does something weird. It like reprograms your fat to store in a different area. And it all has to do with something called lipoprotein lipase. It basically makes it so your subcutaneous fat doesn't store fat as much and some of it diverts over to your visceral fat. Let's break down how this works so that you can have a strategy to, I guess, kind of mitigate this from happening. Hey, after this video, I want you to check out Ujido Matcha Green Tea. They are a matcha green tea and they are my go-to matcha. So if you're looking for something to have in the morning, maybe in place of coffee or in addition to coffee, something that just is going to get you the benefits of green tea, but really, really easy, I highly recommend you check them out. So there's a link down below. They are what I use when I am doing keto, when I'm fasting, or pretty much any time I'm trying to switch over from coffee. So I'll have coffee when I wake up and then I switch over to matcha. And they also have these individual single serve like travel packs that way you can use them when you're on the go just add them to a water bottle shake it up and it's matcha that is good and effective they're a 180 year old matcha company so if anyone knows how to do matcha it is them so use that link down below in the description and thank you Ujido Matcha for the continued support on this channel so the way that I had uncovered this research was I found another study that was published in the journal nutrition and it took a look at a large amount of subjects that had consumed like high fructose corn syrup like a lot of sodas and they found that they generally had a significantly higher level of visceral fat. And even you know, despite calorie intake, whatever, they seemed to store more fat in the visceral region. And it got me thinking, okay, well, what's going on here? A lot of it has to do with what is called insulin resistance being developed. Now, we know that insulin resistance is where you know, the pancreas is producing insulin, but the cells aren't exactly understanding how to accept it. So therefore, blood sugar stays high but it also plays a role in where we store fat. You see, insulin resistance can be a problem because normally our subcutaneous fat, like which is just the fat that's on our body, like normal fat, well, it is relatively insulin sensitive. And what that means is that like, if we have an overage of calories or glucose or anything, it's going to allow those fat cells to open up and take on fat which is what it should do. I mean, it's not exactly ideal. We don't want to gain fat, but we also don't want to have like it with nowhere to go. That's even worse. So what ends up happening is lipoprotein lipase, which is an enzyme that allows us to store fat. Lipoprotein lipase is like the enzyme that is like reverse engineers the fat in your bloodstream to ultimately build into your tissue. So it may sound like we don't want lipoprotein lipase to really do its job, but we do because it's very important. Storing fat is very important. We just have to do it right. But when we're insulin resistant, what happens is lipoprotein lipase does not build fat very well in a normal fat cell. So what happens? Well, it flows over and it goes over to the visceral fat and it stores in the visceral fat. So the long and the short of it is, your subcutaneous tissue is very insulin sensitive and that loses its sensitivity. So the fat says, well, I don't really want to hang out here. I'm going to go to the visceral fat. And then we accumulate more visceral fat, which mind you is metabolically active and also immunologically active. It's a big problem to have a lot of visceral fat. But the secondary thing that we have to think about is kind of the highlight of this video is fructose. What's going on with fructose? Well, fructose, we can only process so much fructose at one point in time. It gets converted into fat significantly easier through what's called de novo lipogenesis. It gets converted into fat and stored in the hepatocytes and then leaked into the plasma. Well, then this fat is kind of circulating around and if that fat that's circulating around that has been created by the liver cannot store in the subcutaneous tissue because of insulin resistance, where is it going to go? Your visceral fat. But then there's another piece of the equation we have to look at too. Fructose elevates glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids are things like cortisol. If you remember those old commercials from the 1990s, they used to talk about cortisol being associated with belly fat. Okay, it's not quite that simple, but it is associated with it. If cortisol levels are high, then that means that we're going to have a higher instance of glucocorticoid receptors drawing cortisol there and drawing potential fat storage. Guess what has a lot of glucocorticoid or cortisol receptors? Take a guess, visceral fat. So we have a double whammy effect coming in. Okay, we have fructose coming in from copious amounts of high fructose corn syrup or maybe too much fruit or even too much fruit juice, whatever. Goes to the liver, it can only process so much, so the liver goes through de novo lipogenesis and creates new fat. 
this new fat now circulates, but you're no longer insulin sensitive at the subcutaneous level, so it travels to the visceral fat. But then, to make matters worse, you also have cortisol levels that have elevated because of the fruit, or the fruit toast in this case, and that has made it so the glucocorticoid receptors are in your visceral fat ready to grab that cortisol and ready to grab that fat. It just reallocates things a whole lot. You don't even have to literally be gaining weight, okay? It's just the fact that it is reallocating how things get stored. Lipoprotein lipase is always active. We are always storing fat and burning and oxidizing fat like throughout the day. Okay, lipolysis is where we are mobilizing fat into the bloodstream. Lipoprotein lipase is going through de novo lipogenesis and creating new fat. It's always happening, okay, and it's happening at different scales. We are just constantly trying to have it happen either at equilibrium, so we're never gaining or losing, or we're generally trying to lose, where we're having more lipolysis, well, more so than storing fat. So this isn't really disrupting that process. That sort of a caloric issue but what it is disrupting is where this occurs. And that's one thing that we can all agree on, is if you take two people that weigh the exact same, have the same amount of muscle mass, or the same people, but one person has more visceral fat than the other, the person with the visceral fat is probably going to have a higher instance of developing issues because they have an inflammatory response coming from the visceral fat. Okay, I've done other videos talking about how to potentially mitigate visceral fat accumulation, but at the end of the day, it really just comes down to, well, taking care of yourself and having a good diverse microbiome and all of that. But the fructose equation is a big one. If you wanted to mitigate how much visceral fat you accumulate, you might want to take a good hard look at how much fructose you are consuming. If you want a certain number, I would typically say between 40 grams and 50 grams of fructose would be the upper limit. Now that is for a general person. If you're doing a different kind of diet, like the ketogenic diet, it might be a different number. It's probably going to be less. It might be closer to 15. I am not saying that fructose is bad but we have to control how much we take in. And the reason that high fructose corn syrup is a problem is because it's so concentrated and you're getting such a concentrated amount of fructose in at one time, your liver cannot process it all at once. So it creates a lot of new fat from that. And that just escalates the problem even more. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.